uh, want to uh, switch gears real quick and sketch out uh, the history a little bit, and then we'll pay closer attention to this on, a, on another video, but I want us to at least take a quick look at it here. So you remember Deuteronomic theology, blessings and curses in response to loyalty to the covenant. You're loyal to God, you experience, and to your neighbor, you experience blessing. You're disloyal to God, you diss your neighbor, you're going to come under curse. This is Moses saying, look, when you go into the land, this is how you are to live. So the next phase, the next phase of our Bible is the, the historical books of Joshua, Judges, 1st and 2nd Samuel, First and second Kings. And you'll see first and second Kings spans quite a bit. I guess I took you off the screen there. So get it turned back around. And so here they are with Joshua. They're going to enter into the promised land. And a rough date for this is 1240. You'll find some different dates given, but we'll go ahead and use this. And so 1240 BC, they are going to enter into the promised land under Joshua's leadership. Okay, back here, Deuteronomy, Moses has died. Um, remember way back here, 1800, there you have Abraham. So Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Joseph, they're down in slavery. Then we get Moses, Moses leads them out of Egypt, roughly 1280, gives them the book of Deuteronomy before they enter into the promised land, gives them these three speeches. And now, First five books are closed, and we're moving into the Deuteronomic history. So that consists of Joshua, Judges, 1st and 2nd Samuel, and 1st and 2nd Kings. And what this does is it's history told through a lens. And the lens that it's told through is Deuteronomic theology. So kind of abbreviation there. The theos for God, theology. And so Deuteronomic theology is the lens that it's told from. So we're going to see this with Joshua. We'll see this play on out. But we'll get Joshua, Judges, and then First and Second Samuel. And First Samuel is all about Samuel, Saul, and David. Second Samuel is all about David. Then we get First and Second Kings. The first 10 chapters of Kings is about Solomon. And then the kingdom's going to split. And then we get the northern kingdom of Israel, the southern kingdom of Judah, And the northern kingdom is going to continue until 722. And then they'll be conquered by Assyria. The southern kingdom, Judah, it's going to continue until 587. And then it's going to be conquered by Babylon. And I know you've read all about this in discovering the Old Testament already. But we're going to unpack it here as we go. So the key thing I want you to pick up on for the moment is that history is always told through a lens. It's always told from a particular perspective. And so what we have going on here is Israel telling its history through the lens of Deuteronomic theology. So as they reflect on their history, what they're going to see is every time they are obedient, they experience blessing. But whenever they are disobedient, then they come under God's curse. From a Deuteronomic perspective, the reason why the northern kingdom falls to the Assyrians isn't because Assyria is so strong and bent on conquering the world. It's because Israel broke covenant. That had they kept covenant with the Lord, then they would not have been kind of wiped off the map, if you will, by Assyria. If they would have been faithful to God and faithful to each other, keeping this covenant, then they would have somehow survived the Syria, and God would have protected them. But as it is, God used Assyria to bring judgment upon them because they were not loyal to the covenant. Okay, same thing with Judah and Babylon. That the reason why Judah falls to Babylon in 587 isn't because simply Babylon was bent on conquering the world. 
it's because Judah sinned against God that they broke covenant. And so the outcome of breaking covenant was they finally experienced the ultimate curse. Babylon came and Babylon exiled them from the promised land. Okay, are you kind of getting how this works? So history is always told through a lens. And this lens for Joshua, Judges, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, it's all compiled and told through the lens of Deuteronomic theology. Now we'll take a slower walk through this so that you can begin to see how it really plays out. But for now, I want you to kind of begin to think about these books together and that they're a, they're a, a historical work that is told through a particular lens. So don't think simply about the book of Joshua. Don't think simply about the book of Judges as if they are kind of independent works. Rather, it's kind of, we might even think of it as one work with four volumes or six volumes if you want to go First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings. So volume one would be Joshua, volume two, Judges, volume three, uh, Samuel or First and Second Samuel. And then volume four, or volume five and six, however you want to go with it, uh, then we get first and second kings. But it's one work. It's history told from this dominant perspective of Deuteronomic theology.